Hello everyone, my name is John, I'm the Geeky Fanboy, and welcome back to Baker Street Reviews. And uh, today we're watching a series I have wanted to watch ever since it came out, namely Miss Sherlock. So you may have seen that I've used a couple of clips of uh, the, uh, Miss Sherlock um, trailers and, and some of my videos and video essays. But truth is, I've never actually seen a full episode of the series. I remember being quite uh, excited back when the trailer came out, because I thought, oh cool, it looks a bit like BBC Sherlock, which I like a lot, uh, but it's set in, in modern day Japan, which is cool, and oh my god, both Holmes and Watson are played by women, which is really, really interesting, and I, th I think a really good or interesting casting choice. And... Then I think I wanted to watch the first episode um, and saw a couple of minutes of it, but somehow got interrupted or something happened and I never went back to watching the show. The series um, came out not too long ago, a couple of years, and it's basically like a BBC Sherlock-esque version, so set in modern day Japan. So it's sort of like a contemporary update, but, um, you know, like I said, instead of two men, it's two women, which I think uh, is... <laughs> I, I don't know how much they implement that into the show. The fact that they are women, I don't know if there they are any, like, themes that have to do with that, I don't know. Um, but I would certainly like to find out also to see if they have you know, changed any of the other characters like Mycroft or Lestrade, how, how they work out in this um, new adaptation. So I thought for this Baker Street review we, we are going to watch the first episode uh, of the series. There are only, I think, eight episodes. Um, also, sadly, the actress who um, played Sherlock in the show sadly passed away last year. Which I think is all the more reason to um, go and finally uh, check out the show, which I have wanted to see for such a long time. So uh, come along with me as we embark on this new journey, watching the first episode of Miss Sherlock. Oh, it's an HBO production. That's good. Oh, so this is probably, I'd say, Dr. Watson. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming she has a different name in this, but I'm assuming this is Dr. Watson maybe coming home. Mm, she's cute, I like her. Oh no. Oh no, someone's already dead! Whoa, that's a lot of blood. Whoa, what the... That's a big hole in his stomach. <laughs> wow, that's an extreme opening. <laughs> Ooh, ah, that's, that's a cool idea. That definitely has Sherlock uh, vibes. Okay, so that is Dr. Watson. Oh, I hope that weirdo is, you know who. The show is already so depressing. Ah, hello. Sherlock. Oh, that's her actual name. That's cool. Maybe it's like a maybe it's like a, a nickname or something for her. I love how this is always standard introduction deduction. This is always the same, and I love it. Daughter's <laughs> Respectful as always, Sherlock. Respectful as always. Is that an actual thing? 
Oh, I'm gonna do so much googling off of this. I love Watson being a practical doctor in the field. I just love it when Watson gets these moments to shine. <laughs> I feel like that face should be me. Criminal psychology? Okay. Interesting. I, I think that's an interesting specification. Ooh, nice shoes. Damn. Too close. <laughs> Ooh, that's a cool transition. <sighs> These liquid bombs are way too brutal. <laughs> too jump scary. Ooh, nice houses. Was that, is that Mrs. Hudson? Is that our Mrs. Hudson for this adaptation? Yeah, I see, okay, so it is a nickname. Okay. Ooh, I sense some backstory. Sherlock. Oh my god, I love this flat already. Looks like a mixture of like, you know, the 221B actual flat, you know, in the museum in London and the one that BBC Sherlock. That's a mood. That sentence is a mood. It's not a thing. If that's a thing, it sounds creepy. I'm digging the coat. From now on, all modern day Sherlock's need a brilliant coat. This Sherlock has a sniffing thing going on. I don't know what to think about that. Part A! Oh no, this already makes me so uncomfortable. <laughs> that, this is me. This is the whole mood. That's me. If I ever have to attend parties. Oh god, yes, relatable. Oh, I love her. Already. Oh, is that place called Criterion? I think the one guy has it on his t-shirt. If so, that's a cool reference. Very neat. Subtle. Seems somewhat ironic. And ever so slightly funny. Hang on, what? So not Dr. Watson, just Watson? So she was like a doctor in training, but never finished the actual training. Huh. I mean, she still has all the medical knowledge, I guess. Sherlock reference, I think. Really, of course, could be a coincidence, but you know, I'm seeing, I'm seeing all... All the references, if I can. Oh, Mycroft! Oh, I didn't think it would be Mycroft so early. Interesting. Cool. Let's just see what they do with it. I'm already digging the siblings dynamic here. Well, I 
サリンだってもともとは殺虫剤として開発されたわけですから。Oh, m i c r o f t is the awkward nice guy. I like it. Oh, maybe all of the victims were in rehab at some point. <laughs> She was the b o y for everything. I feel like this might become a running gag. I don't know. I feel like something really, really bad is about to happen. Mine's mine. Well, she even does the hand thing, and like, but I didn't come about to show the dot. I can certainly see the references. How's this man able to just walk into a rehab center? So, did his tummy explode? What happened? Yakubu is on shore. Kuchideva has a state of the Kukona Jayama Cho Purikaiso. Think of so, I got your motto Yakubu. Deduction montage, deduction montage. Ah, and the music kicks in. I think one to something. Kibu. Hani wa anata. Yeah, honestly, that doesn't seem like a big surprise. Ten years ago, a man was killed in Kanagawa by a woman with a baby. At that time, the single mother was your daughter. Ah, so it was her kid. So did she kill her husband by accident or on purpose? That was both horrible and surprisingly casual. This show is way darker than I thought it would be. But how? I mean, I know details, details, but still, I would like to know how. So he killed him on purpose. Oh, I guess he was just trying to get a kill. I mean, yeah, but that's still kind of weak evidence. もちろん、ポリス社に出資していたのがあなただったということも警察が証拠済み。Ah, okay. Still, not the best evidence, perhaps. Why do I feel like she's about to take the last pill to kill herself? Called it. God, this show is so depressing. Kanoja ga hitori de kono keika go jiku dekiru to omoe na ushiro ni dare ka ga iru ka shirabe sasete. Oh, is that where we get the Moriarty reference? If she couldn't do it alone, maybe Moriarty helped her. Who knows? <sighs> Give me the background story. <laughs> yeah, Mycroft with the best ideas. <laughs> Imoto Sharoko, Yoroshko Migashimas. So, yeah, this is also a bit like、uh, the end of the first episode of BBC Sherlock, you know, with Mycroft sort of asking Watson to take care of Sherlock. But, like, you know, I kind of like the dynamics here.
She's mine now. I'll take her home with me. I'll feed her. <laughs> that was cool. That was cute. So, um... Yeah. Oh, lots to take in. It's very interesting, but um, obviously I'll tell you more about that in the review part. And welcome back. So, yeah. This was a lot of fun. Um... I think that you can definitely see where the influences are um, coming from. You can definitely see that there are references to the BBC show, you know, and just some of the visuals, also some of the story beats do feel the same, like, um, you know, the uh, killer dying at the very end, but Sherlock sort of trying to get some information out of them. Um, just generally the vibes, I think, are um, similar, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, because I think the show does enough of its own thing to to warrant this as a as an individual adaptation separate from um the bbc one i've um i also read on wikipedia that the actress who played um sherlock also took a lot of inspiration from benedict cumberbatch's version um which i can see like the sort of the physicality in some places is um is very similar and sort of you know this general delight sherlock uh, expresses when he's confronted with you know death in general um, you can certainly see, you know, also the eccentricities being sort of, um, being sort of similar. Um, but then I guess Spandy Combat sort of started a trend with his portrayal um, of detectives. So I can kind of understand why they would sort of want to uh, run with it since the show was very, very popular, I think, also in Japan as well. Um, but like I said, I think the show does enough of its own to um, to impress. I think, of course, this was only um, the first episode. Um, but what we got, I think, was a very, very solid. Okay, but let's talk about um, the characters. Obviously, first of all, um, Sherlock, I already mentioned, I can see the inspiration from the Benedict Cumberbatch version. But I really, really like the actress um, and, and what she does with it. Like, it's it, Sherlock certainly feels very... Um, eccentric and you know a asocial um but you know i kind of like that it's it's off-putting and charming at the same time like you do see um sherlock already being sort of interested in this relationship with uh with the doctor and i really really like um the few glimpses we get at sherlock's relationship with her brother with uh mycroft um who has a very similar position as to what we're used to from him in, in the books and and the other adaptations and uh, it's interesting to see the, the sort of uh, the, the sibling dynamic there and uh it'll be interesting to see as to how sherlock takes to um takes to the doctor how uh, because you know she sort of said at the end you'll you'll, you'll regret moving in with me or something like that so, and she, like, is keen, still keen to point out we're not friends, we're sort of just hanging out, so maybe it sort of starts out as a uh, colleague uh, working relationship sort of thing, and then she, like, slowly opens up and like, accepts this idea of friendship and having someone um, living with her, which, you know, is, a, is a sort of a classic um, a take, especially a contemporary take on Sherlock Holmes, which I don't mind. I think, I think that's very interesting, especially since it allows for Sherlock to be a bit more um emotional since very much see here this classic idea of Sherlock being very um cold to a certain degree where he really doesn't where she really doesn't allow any kind of emotions and if she does it's maybe misplaced in cer at certain moments um you know that Sherlock is too too harsh sometimes or too um straightforward that sort of thing which I think is a very popular idea of how um Sherlock Holmes acts especially in um contemporary adaptations um but i like that it's not too on the nose like it's not too far out there and and i think they it give her enough nuance to sort of um latch onto something where you're thinking oh this is an interesting part of her character or there's still something there to explore especially in regards to her name like we have we have that at the end where watson asks her um whether the name sherlock actually come from which i think is a very very interesting aspect since naturally the name sherlock in a contemporary Japanese setting wouldn't really work or it would at least my father just had the most gigantic sneeze ever 
So I think there are a lot of in, uh, interesting um, facets for the audience to latch onto when it comes to short. Like, like especially the name, I think, is very, very interesting since we sort of get we get this little tease at, at a background story. Since uh, obviously in modern day contemporary Japan, the name Sherlock wouldn't really work without gaining some kind of attention. Like no one would just name their child Sherlock in Japan. I'm assuming. So it'll be interesting to see as to where this leads since Mrs. Hudson, who is adorable, by the way, this version of Mrs. Hudson, um, says she chose the name herself and she has a real name. We, we haven't heard it. We don't know Sherlock's birth name, so to speak. And we don't know why she has chosen the name Sherlock, which I think is is, a, is an interesting mystery um, uh, to, to explore. And I hope that that will uh, come up in future episodes. Um, let's talk about the Doctor, our Doctor Watson. In this case, very interesting. They do some things a little bit different. Um, we saw that she's not actually like a fully trained um, medical doctor. Like she started her training, but never completed it. And then um, tried to volunteer for things and then went off to um, Syria, which I think is also a very contemporary thing that you maybe would have medical people from Japan helping in Syria rather than Afghanistan. I don't know. Uh, but I think it still works uh, It works just, just as well, especially in this contemporary setting. And I like what I'm doing with her, that she gets to be practical and she gets to show that she has the medical knowledge. And this is sort of what introduces her to Sherlock, what Sherlock uses her for in the beginning, that she has this medical knowledge and gets to apply it, which I just love when Watson gets to do that. And I think there's still a bit more to her character. Like, she seems very... Like, she's holding something back. Like, there's something... Like she's repressing something, like there's some kind of sadness, you know, she comes back and she doesn't have any anywhere to stay, she's she doesn't earn any money, she doesn't have any work right now. She's just come back, her her mentor died right in front of her. And now she's just thrown into this new life with this new weird, weird person with with police people and everything, and she just doesn't really know how to, how to how to handle that, which I think would will will be quite interesting going going forward, seeing how Watson will adapt to this um, new life, which I also see is a bit similar to the BBC version. Though I think here, this Watson in this version feels a little more approachable, a little more open. Like, you know, in the BBC version, um, Watson feels, in the in the BBC version, Watson just feels very, sort of, almost called himself to a certain degree. You know, we get these hints at PTSD in the beginning, and we don't get this at all um, in this version, which I like. Like, Watson is sort of adorable <laughs> to a certain degree, and very, very approachable. Like, she's open to this whole new idea, but she very much represents this idea of the everyday man, which I think is the perfect idea for Watson. Like, she has the knowledge that can help Sherlock, that can help with the investigation, but she still very much is in this position of the everyday person who is just overwhelmed by what's going on, but tries to make the best out of this weird, weird situation. And... I already mentioned. I think it's going to be quite interesting to see going forward how the relationship between Watson and um, and Sherlock uh, develops in this. Since I don't really see them liking each other, really, not really of this first ever episode. Like sort of Sherlock just sort of adopts Watson, so to speak, because Mycroft says so, and Watson doesn't really know yet how to deal with this whole new situation and this whole new um, relationship, friendship thing that might come from that. So I think I think it'll be fun to uh, it'll be fun to see what what they do with that. Of course, we get also a hint at some other characters. Um, we get the inspector, who I, I'm thinking is based on uh, on Lestrade. That's his name. On um, Lestrade taking on Emma's just um, traditional role of you know he's there to introduce Sherlock to the crime scene and sort of help us understand what Sherlock's position within the police force actually is. That sort of thing. Uh, in that regard, I think that's very classic. Um, I like the running gag with uh, with the inspector's assistant that he sort of has to do everything. Uh, at least I hope that's sort of a running gag that keeps on going. Um, and we have Mycroft, who I already mentioned a bit. Um, I think he's I think he's cool. He he seems a lot less um, cool than what we're used to from the BBC version, for example. Um, which I think is great because I always imagine Mycroft um, to be honestly emotionally more open or available um, and more well-adjusted just because of his job also. 
and I like that here he seems to be the sort of uh, awkward, friendly, polite guy who you know just tries to do his job and wants to take care of of his sister. And I, I kind of like the the sibling dynamic we or we can already see b between these two. Like the like they're not really as as cold as we see in the BBC version, but they do actually seem to sort of care for each other. But you know maybe have a bit of a problem admitting it, but that they definitely do have uh, a connection. Like they regularly meet or something like that. And they are able to like you know hang out with each other without punching each other off the two minutes. So I hope I hope that Mycroft makes other appearances uh, as well in some of the other episodes. Okay, so those were my thoughts on the first episode of Miss Sherlock. Do let me know if you would like to see me covering the other episodes as separate Baker Street reviews, or if you would just like me to do a uh, a review for the entire series. Please do me do tell me in, in the comments below how you'd like to see that. I'm I'm definitely going to watch the rest of the series. I'm very very interested, and I think. Uh, the show has a lot of potential. The actresses are doing a very good job. I, I'm liking the aesthetics, and even though it uh, borrows a lot from BBC Sherlock uh, show, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I sort of want to see what they um, come up with by uh, by themselves. And the first case worked well enough, so I would like to see what other interesting uh, cases they could come up with in the future. So that's it for this review. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done it already. And I will see all of you next time. Goodbye.